Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m., the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, and we are live. Hope everybody's doing well today. It's been a very, very busy news day. And uh, the two stories that I want to deal with, some of you have been uh, following my social media posts on Facebook and uh, on Instagram as well, the African History Network uh, on Facebook and uh, Michael M. Hotep on Instagram as well as YouTube. I, I posted I posted an article this morning dealing with, with uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg on The View. Um made uh, some comments about the uh, Holocaust during World War II, uh, the Holocaust against uh, six million Jews, but there were also Polish killed and there were Afro-Germans killed as well. And she talked about, uh, she made statements saying the Holocaust was not about race, it was about inhumanity against man. And well, we got the news this morning, it's a big article from uh, the Daily Beast, the dailybeast.com that I posted on our D African History Network, and it uh, it got over 400 comments. Uh, last time I checked, it got something like 800 likes, something like that. But it got over 400 comments, and I was uh, talking to some of the people coming. And a lot of people, a lot of African Americans, are upset that she was uh, suspended for two weeks. Now, this is keep in mind, the suspension took place after she apologized on the air. So she made these statements. Um, she made the statements on Monday uh, on The View and uh, Monday, which was uh, January 31st, Monday, January 31st. Then uh, there was backlash, those statements on Tuesday on The View. Uh, she publicly apologized. And this is a nuanced understanding. We're going to get into this deep history lesson. OK, it's a nuanced understanding to understanding the Holocaust. Now, um, we know the international uh, remembrance of the Holocaust was January 27th. And we dealt with some of this history on the show back on January 27th. And we talked about uh, some of the Afro Germans that Hitler was killing as well. Okay. Now, yes, it was a lot more Jews. Okay. But oftentimes when these conversations about the Holocaust take place, the Afro Germans that were being killed are left out. I was listening to Reverend Al Sharpton's show today, uh, politic, uh, keeping it real, keeping it real right here on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation WFDF. And he said, if, if, uh, uh, blacks had been over there, we would have been killed too by Hitler. We were killed by Hitler and he was doing experiments on us. Okay. This gets left out of the conversation. So, uh, Whoopi Goldberg apologized on Tuesday. And then we got the news this morning, uh, that she was, uh, suspended for two weeks There's a big article from, uh, the daily beast that deals with how, uh, a lot of her, uh, co-panelists are upset. The View co-hosts furious at ABC for suspending Whoopi. And there are a lot of African-Americans who are upset as well. So we're going to deal with this today and deal with some history as well. Talk some more about some of the history of the Holocaust, deal with some of the history that gets left out because there were Afro-Germans that were being killed. And one of the problems is, is that African-Americans, we don't know our own history. So when uh, this conversation comes up, we don't know uh, to talk about the Afro-Germans that were killed. There was approximately 25,000 to 50,000 Afro-Germans that were killed. And even when I, when, even when I hear people, uh, even, you know, like International Day of Remembrance of the Holocaust, you know, we, we shared one article from the Associated Press. This is a good example. We shared one article from the Associated Press that talked about the International, um, the International Holocaust Remembrance Day and there was not one word in there about the Afro Germans that Hitler killed. Okay, not one word. And, and I'm gonna pull this up. I, I want you to read this article. Okay, and now, without without dispute, yes, there was a lot more Jews that were killed than Afro Germans. But how's it the Afro Germans don't even get talked about? It's not even it, usually it's not even a footnote about them. Um. So I, I want to pull up this. Uh, this other article world remembers holocaust world remembers holocaust as anti-semitism rises in pandemic 
okay, as anti-Semitism rises in pandemic. Now, this is from the Associated Press. And uh, on the 27th, we talked about this story here. And let me see if we could pull this up. Uh, this is from APnews.com. Because I want you to read it and see how we get left out of this history. And one of the things that there was an article I was looking at shortly before coming on the air here um, is that you have a lot of uh, fans of The View who are upset with um, the uh, ABC News president, Kim Godwin, suspending Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks. And she said that, it, you know, some of this, I was trying not to get pissed off today. Just be, just be honest with you. Just to be perfectly honest with you. When I was reading this, this is one of the first things I read this morning, this article. I should not have done it because I've been mad all day. While Whoopi has apologized, I've asked her to take time to reflect and learn about the impact of her comments. It's like she's treating Whoopi Goldberg like a child that you put in time out. Well, re re read this article here from the Associated Press. World remembers Holocaust as anti-Semitism rises in pandemic. Now, we talked about this article here on January 27th, which was the International Holocaust Remembrance Day. We dealt with all that. And I, like I said before, I have no problem with talking about the Holocaust. When we talk about the Holocaust, we need to talk about the Afro-Germans that Hitler was killing as well. Now, when you read, I want everybody to read this article. We don't have time to go through a lot of it here, but read this article. When you go through and read this article, they don't say anything about the black people Hitler was killing. Now, once again, he, Hitler was killing more than just Jews. Okay. This is why we have to study all this history. All right. He was killing more than just Jews. He was killing more than people in, in Germany. He was killing them in Poland and France, things like this. Um, if, and it goes through, okay, about 6 million Jews, about, about 6 million Jews and millions of other people were killed by the Nazis and their collaborators. Some 1.5 million children were killed. I don't have a problem. We can talk about all that. We can talk about all the victims. That's fine. But now in this article, not one word about the afro German that Hitler was killing. How the hell is that possible? But when you don't know your history, you can't raise these issues and say, hold on, wait a second, wait a second. How is it you have all this and you don't even mention the black people Hitler was killing? So we're going to talk about this on today's show. We're going to get deep into this because you have uh, the View co-host at the Furious at ABC, at, at ABC News President Kimberly Godwin for uh, suspending Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks. But then also we're going to talk about uh, some of the Afro-Germans Hitler was killing as well. There was a piece that I posted today from um, um, TheGuardian.com. And I sent The Guardian a donation as well because I read so many of their articles. I said, OK, I, they came up with that little that that little uh, that that little message. Uh, please donate to us. You've read it said you've read 17 articles from the Guardian this year. Please donate to us. So I sent I sent them a few dollars. OK, so. <laughs> All right. If you like this, we're coming up on a break. If you like the type of information that we share. Also, you can support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through cash app. Dollar sign the AHN show through cash app. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Um, and we're six, six days a week. Um, we're coming up on the break. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the calling number. If you have a question or comment, listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. 
The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995 and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008 and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, The Business of Beings, was released in December 2021 and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis's books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, and we are live. Hope everybody's doing well. Call in numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Uh, we dropped the call right before the break, so it cut out on me. Um, I'm calling into the radio station through Skype, so just bear with us here. Um, the call in number is 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. So um, we're talking about Whoopi Goldberg uh, on The View, the anchor on The View. Um, she and she, I think she's been on The View since 2007, something like that. But she, uh, yeah, she's been uh, the, on The View since 2007. She was suspended. It was announced this morning, suspended for two weeks for... Uh, basically saying that the Holocaust uh, 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 of six million Jews during uh, World War II by the Nazis, the Holocaust was not about race, but it was about man's inhumanity to man. Now, we're going to get into some of this history because it was about race, but it's different than the, than the concept that we think of American racism, which is largely white against african American. No, it is different than that. Okay, and this and and this requires a a deeper understanding of the Holocaust. And um, she also went on Steve Colbert's uh, show as well after the view and explained herself some more. And I understand what she was saying. She just didn't know. Okay, she didn't mean anything malicious by it. She wasn't attacking anybody. She wasn't calling any people name anybody any names. And she keyed a cue uh, uh, clip number one up. I just seen that sent that to you. Q clip number one up from Good Morning America, please. She didn't mean anything malicious about it, anything like that. She just didn't know. But a lot of Americans, a lot of a lot of uh, Americans are unaware of history, ignorant of history. And there's a declining uh, awareness when it comes to the Holocaust and the history of the Holocaust as well. OK. All right. So uh, we're going to uh, we'll, we'll go to clip one in just a second here. So he here's what happened for those that don't know. Um, Whoopi Goldberg was suspended from The View for two weeks over her Monday remarks about the Holocaust, and most of her co-hosts are furious with the network sources told the Daily Beast. Now, uh, Kimberly Godwin, who's the ABC News president, uh, said in a note to staff on Tuesday evening, Tuesday evening, we got the word basically late Tuesday night, early uh, this morning, because I think I saw something last night before I went, well, I can't remember what time I went to bed. I went to bed at three in the morning. I went to bed at three o'clock this morning, so I, I don't, I saw something before I went to bed. Effectively, immediately, I am suspending Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks for her wrong and hurtful comments. 
quote, while Whoopi has apologized, I have asked her to take time to reflect and learn about the impact of her comments. Now, Kim Godwin went on to say in the statement, the entire ABC News organization stands in solidarity with our Jewish colleagues, friends, family, and communities. I'm not sure how she knows that. Did she take a poll? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how she knows that, one. But two, um, Whoopi Goldberg stands with the Jewish community as well. She was just unaware. She didn't, she wasn't trying to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that. She was just unaware of the history. Now, Kim Godwin, ABC News president, further said that, quote, these decisions are never easy but necessary. While Whoopi Goldberg's comments, quote unquote, do not align with the values or culture of ABC News, she added, quote, it was important. It was important that the view host had a chance to address her remarks on Tuesday's broadcast, quote, and and have an educational conversation with Anti-Defamation League CEO Jonathan Greenblatt. Now, did you have anybody on the show to talk about the African-American perspective or the African perspective when it dealt with the Jewish Holocaust or, 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 or deal with the Holocaust in general and the Afro-Germans that Hitler was killing? Did you, the show is called The View, right? So whose view is it? Is it just your view? I mean, Jonathan Greenblatt, he, Shed some good history dealing with the Holocaust, but who was there to talk about the Africans that that Hitler was killing? Who was there to talk about the fact that the Nuremberg laws? Then we dealt with this here on this show. This is why I was in a sh to support this show, okay? Because it, it takes a lot of work to put this show together. And it, as I've said before, I don't I don't get paid from the radio station to do this show, so it takes a lot of resources to do this. Um, who is talking about the fact? that the Nuremberg laws that Hitler instituted against the Jews, he studied the segregation laws that the U.S. had against African-Americans to come up with the Nuremberg laws. We talked about this on January 27th on the International Day of Remembrance of the Holocaust. Uh, History.com has a good article. And when, when I teach um, my, my classes dealing with uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968, we deal with this in the class. I'm going to pull this up here from, uh, you know, what we'll do. We're going to go to clip one first. Let's go to clip one from Good Morning America. This is what happened. And then we'll, uh, we're going to get into some of these articles and deal with some of this history. Let's go to clip one, Shakita. The View co-host Whoopi Goldberg suspended for two weeks for her comments about the Holocaust. Carol you know, has the story. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you, George. Though Goldberg has apologized, her comments sparked a firestorm, something that's as a troubling sign of fading understanding about the horrors of the Holocaust. This morning, ABC News suspending Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks in response to her inflammatory remarks about the Holocaust. ABC News President Kim Godwin saying in a statement, effective immediately, I am suspending Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks for her wrong and hurtful comments. While Whoopi has apologized, I've asked her to take time to reflect and learn about the impact of her comments. The entire ABC News organization stands in solidarity with our Jewish colleagues, friends, family, and communities. If you're yeah. going to do this, then let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust isn't about race. On Monday's show, the host of ABC's The View inaccurately claimed the Holocaust was not related to race. It's not about race. It's not about what race. is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. That's what it's about. Whoopi Goldberg. Goldberg appearing to double down on the Colbert show that night. The American experience tends to be based on skin. Yes. And so that is what race means to me. Mm -hmm. When you talk about uh, being a racist, I was saying you can't call this racism. This was evil. Mm -hmm. This wasn't this wasn't based on the skin. You couldn't tell who was Jewish. Mm -hmm. They had to delve deeply to figure it out. Then tweeting an apology, saying in part, the Jewish people around the world have always had my support and that will never waver. I'm sorry for the hurt I have caused. And the next day, opening the view with this. I said that the Holocaust wasn't about race. And it was instead about man's inhumanity to man. But it is indeed about race. Because Hitler and the Nazis considered Jews to be an inferior race. Now, words matter, and mine are no exception. 
I regret my comments, as I said, and I stand corrected. I also stand with the Jewish people, as they know, and y'all know, because I've always done that. By the end of the Holocaust, just 77 years ago, six million Jews had been murdered. That might not fit exactly or feel different than the way we think about race in 21st century America, where primarily it's about people of color. But throughout the Jewish people's history, they have been marginalized, they have been persecuted, they have been slaughtered in large part because many people felt they were not just a different religion, but indeed a different race. The head of the Anti-Defamation League warning anti-Semitism is still a real and present danger. We need people on good faith on the left and the right to call this out forcefully, fully, without hesitation. And studies show an alarming decline in knowledge about the Holocaust at a time when anti-Semitism has surged to unprecedented levels. The FBI saying Jews are the most targeted for religious-based hate crimes in this country. And George, as you heard there, Goldberg saying she regrets her comments and any hurt they may have caused. Yes, she did. Okay, Ariel, thanks very much. Okay, pause it right there. We're going to go to clip two in just a second, Shakita from the Black News Channel. Okay, let's jump into this because we're coming up on the break. Now, right before the break, now this is something that very few people talk about. And we deal with this in the, in the online history classes that I teach, and I'm a historian. How the Nazis were inspired by Jim Crow to craft legal discrimination. The Third Reich studied the United States. This is from History.com, which is the official website of the History Channel. How the hell is it? How how the hell is it that this does not come come up when we talk about the Holocaust? Now we talked about it here on the African on the African History Network show during the international day of, of remembrance of the holocaust we dealt with this here on this on this show uh if we look at let me go to this hold on just a second here okay in 1935 nazi germany passed two radically discriminatory discriminatory pieces of legislation the reich citizenship uh law and the protection of German blood and German honor, the Reich citizenship law, and the protection of German blood and German honor. Together, these were known as the Nuremberg Laws. Now, how many people are familiar with the Nuremberg Laws? Now, if you watch this show, especially on the 27th, we talked about the Nuremberg Laws. And the Nuremberg Laws laid the groundwork for the persecution of Jewish people during the Holocaust, and World War uh, and World War Two, because the persecution started before World War Two started. Uh, Hitler comes to power, German Chancellor, nineteen thirty-three. Now, when the Nazis set out to legally disenfranchise and discriminate against Jewish citizens, they weren't just coming up with ideas out of thin air. No, 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 no. They looked to the land of the free and the home of the brave for some ideas. They closely, the Nazis closely studied the laws of another country, according to James Q. Whitman, author of Hitler's American Model. That country was the good old United States of America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. OK, now, uh, uh, author Jason uh, Q. Whitman said America in the early 20th century was the leading racist jurisdiction in the world. I think it still is, to tell you the truth. Um, who he's a professor at Yale Law School. He said, quote, Nazi lawyers, as a result, were interested in very closely, it, it, they were interested in and looked very closely at and were ultimately influenced by American race law. Uh-oh. See, see, how is it that this does not come up when we have these conversations? Nazi lawyers, as a result, were interested in, looked very closely at, and were ultimately influenced by American race law, end quote. Now, in particular, Nazis admired the Jim Crow era laws that discriminated against African Americans and segregated them from white Americans. And they debated, they debated whether to introduce similar segregation in Germany. Yet, the, yet they ultimately de decided that it would not go far enough. They ultimately decided that it would not go far enough. However, they used some of what they learned from U.S. segregation laws 
for the Nuremberg laws to discriminate against the Jews and persecute the Jews. Quote, one of the most striking Nazi views was that Jim Crow was a suitable racist program in the United States because American blacks were already oppressed and poor. OK, one of the most striking Nazi views was that Jim Crow was a suitable racist program in the United States because American blacks were already oppressed and poor. But then in Germany, by contrast, where the Jews, as the Nazis imagined they were, not all of them were rich and powerful, but some of them were, as the Jews, as the Nazis imagined it, the Jews were rich and powerful. It was necessary to take more severe measures against the Jews from the Nazi perspective. Because of this, Nazis were more interested in how the U.S. had, des had designated Na uh, Native Americans, Filipinos, and other groups as non-citizens, as non-citizens, even though they lived in the U.S. or its territories. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. This history lesson that you ain't going to get a whole lot of other places. Listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Follow the story Skeeter Hawk as attorney Ben Brooks rediscovers his Gullah Geechee heritage and finds romance along the Gullah Trail and the Sea Islands. Jilted by his fiance who refused to marry him, Ben Brooks goes back home to Gullah country. There, the Gullah people come to call him Skeeter Hawk. While rediscovering his heritage, Skeeter Hawk unravels dark family secrets. A beautiful childhood friend, Fulla, becomes his guide as they travel the Gullah Trail from North Carolina to the Sea Islands in South Carolina in search of more answers. Ben Brooks falls in love with her and becomes torn between her and his former fiance who wants to rekindle their romance. He also deals with a premonition that one of his enemies is pursuing him, providing a backdrop for mystery, romance, intrigue, and suspense in this page-turning novel called Skeeter Hawk from author Sabby Stone. Order your copy today at SabbyStone.com. That's S-A-B-Y, SabbyStone.com. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. Call in numbers 313-778-7600. If you have a quick question or comment, 313-778-7600. Uh, those watching on Facebook and YouTube, share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Tag your friends in it. I'd like them to tune in. It's this type of history lesson you're not going to get many other places. Okay, so right before the break, um, we were talking about this. Uh, we were talking about Whoopi Goldberg being suspended from the view for two weeks after apologizing on air on the view. Uh, she's suspended by the president of ABC News, Kim Godwin, for and she was suspended for saying that the Jewish Holocaust was uh, not about race. OK, it was about man's and humility to man. OK, so we're dealing with this history, breaking this down. And um, also, right before we get back to this, be sure to visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can register for the online history classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, class number one starts up Saturday, February 5th, 2022, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Kemet is one of the original names of Egypt, ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. So we do a thousand years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade uh, taking place. And then uh, also I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. 
And this class deals with, uh, we start with the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, and we deal with history uh, going up until 1968 to understand what happened after slavery ended, what happened during Reconstruction, during the Jim Crow era, et cetera. That's on Sunday, starting February 6th. 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we have a bundle pack here. You can register for both classes for only $120. The classes are normally $130 each. They're on sale $80, but we have a bundle pack. You can register for both classes for $120. And you still have access to the full class even after the course is over with. So a year from now, if you want to go back and watch the entire class, you can do that, okay? So we'll give you some more information about the class before we get out of here. All right. I want to go back to this. Uh, we were talking about the Nuremberg laws um, right before the break, because a lot of people don't know this history. So this is a piece from history.com that deals with how the Nuremberg laws were inspired. The Nuremberg laws that were used in Nazi Germany to uh, discriminate against uh, Jews. They were inspired by Jim Crow laws here in the U.S., and how the U.S. was treating African Americans and Native Americans and Filipinos, et cetera. So, because uh, so, so the Nazis were more interested in how the U.S. had designated Native Americans, Filipinos, and other groups as non-citizens, even though they lived in the U.S. or its territories. These models influenced citizenship. Th these models influenced the citizenship portion. The citizenship. Por oh, hold on. We lost connection with the radio station. Just a second here. OK. All right. All right. We're back. We dropped a call there. Sorry about that. Skype went out on us. OK. So we were talking about the Nuremberg laws. We'll uh, just uh, cue that uh, clip back up from the Black News Channel. We're going to go back to that, Shakita, in just a second here. OK. So uh, right before the break, we were talking about the Nuremberg laws and how the Nazis used the uh, were inspired by Jim Crow laws here in the U.S. to craft the Nuremberg laws. OK. The Nuremberg laws were the laws that they used to target uh, Jews, discriminate against Jews in Nazi Germany. So uh, if we go back to this piece here from history.com, um, what us see here. Uh, in particular, Nazis admired Jim Crow era laws that discriminated against uh, black Americans and segregated them from from white Americans. OK, now. Because, um, these models influenced the citizenship portion of the Nuremberg laws, which stripped German Jew, uh, which stripped uh, German Jews of their citizenship. Hold on, let me scroll back down here. Just a second. These these models influenced the citizenship portion of the Nuremberg laws, which stripped German Jews of their citizenship and classified them as nationals. All right, now, but a component of the Jim Crow era that Nazis did think they could translate into Germany were anti-miscegenation laws, which prohibited interracial marriages in 30 of 40 states, okay? Uh, prohibited African-Americans from marrying white people. We know it was not legal in all 50 states till 1967, the Loving case in 1967. America had a wide margin. America had, by a wide margin, the harshest law of this kind, Professor Whitman says. In particular, some of the state laws threatened severe criminal punishment for interracial marriage. That was something radical Nazis were very eager to do in Germany as well. The idea of banning Jewish and Aryan marriages presented the Nazis with a dilemma. How would they tell who was Jewish and who was not? How would they tell who was Jewish and who was not? Because as Whoopi Goldberg said, this was like white people against white people. So how do you tell? After all, race and ethnic categories are socially constructed and interracial relationships produce offspring who don't feel who don't fall neatly into one box. Again, the Nazis look to America. Quote, connected with these anti-miscegenation laws was a great deal of American jurisprudence on how to classify who belonged to which race, how to classify who belonged to which race. Controversial one drop rules stipulated that anyone with any black ancestry was legally black and could not marry a white person. Laws also defined what made a person Asian or Native American. 
in order to prevent these groups from marrying whites, notably Virginia had a Pocahontas, quote unquote, Pocahontas exception for prominent white families who claimed to be descended from Pocahontas. The Nuremberg Laws, too, came up with a system determining who belonged to what group, allowing the Nazis to criminalize marriage and sex between Jewish and Aryan people because the Nazis said that the Aryans were the superior race. They were a white race. They were a superior race. And the Nazis classify Jews not as a religious group, but as a inferior race. So you had the Aryan race that was the superior white race. They classified the Jews as an inferior race and also said that they weren't human. Sounds like the way African-Americans were treated in this country. Now, rather than adopting a one drop rule, the Nazis decreed that a Jewish person was anyone who had three or more Jewish grandparents, which means, as Professor Whitman notes, that American racial classification was much harsher than anything the Nazis themselves were willing to introduce in Germany, even though the Nazis studied Jim Crow here and took and modeled the part of the Nuremberg laws from the miscegenation laws here. And they were inspired. The Nazis were inspired by the Jim Crow laws here in the U S it should come as no surprise then that Nazis weren't uniformly condemned in the U S before the country entered the war, before the country entered world war II. And that wasn't until 1941 where Pearl Harbor was bombed in the, in the early 1930s, American eugenicists, eugenics means good genes. Okay. And eugenics comes about around, around 1883. Um, um, about 1883, eugenics is, is coined. Um, in early 1930s, in the early night, hold on just a second. In the early 1930s, American eugenicists welcomed Nazi ideas about racial purity and republished their propaganda. American aviator Charles Lindenberg or Lindbergh accepted a swastika medal from the Nazi party in 1938. Now we know the swastika is a corruption of the Gramadon, which is an African symbol. If you read Black Man and the Nile, Black Man of the Nile and His Family by Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen, okay, you see the Gramadon in the in there. The Gramadon was an African symbol that was a spiritual symbol. And it consisted of um, the, the Gramadon consisted of four right angles. A right angle is 90 degrees, 90 times four is 360. It was a spiritual symbol and dealt with 360 degrees of knowledge. It became corrupted by the Nazis. And also Hitler studied North African philosophy. He studied Egypt. The, his title of Führer is, is uh, also uh, 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 in German means Pharaoh, okay? So Nazis study North African philosophy, as a lot of people do. Um, I mean, you look at, you look at uh, um, the Washington Monument here in the U.S. That's an African symbol called a Tekken coming out of ancient Kemet. And we know that uh, 50 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence um, were in, in 1776 were Freemasons, including George Washington. OK, so the, the foundation of Freemasonry is the knowledge coming out of ancient Kemet, the Nile Valley region of Africa, ancient Africa. All right. Now. Um, once the United States entered World War II in 1940, actually entered fighting at the Pearl Harbor bomb, December 7th, 1941, it took a decidedly anti-Nazi stance. But Black Americans, African Americans, African American troops noticed the similarities between two countries and confronted them head on with a double V campaign, a double V campaign, its goal the 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 the, war, the African American World War II veterans, the World War II soldiers, people like Megger Evers, okay, who was who was at D Day, um, in 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 France, okay, June uh, nineteen forty four, victory abroad against the Axis powers and victory at home against Jim Crow. They had a double B campaign. They said we got a fight abroad and a fight at home. 
All right, so read this article here from history.com because very few people actually want to talk about this, how the Nazis were inspired by Jim Crow. Okay, now we're coming up on a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to go to this clip here from um, uh, the Black News Channel. They talked about it today. Amisha Cross, who I know, and and also uh, Candace Kelly, legal analyst Candace Kelly. We've both been panelists on Roller Martin and Filtered Amisha and Candace myself. We're also going to deal with this here, learn more about black history in Germany. OK, so once again, how is it that the Afro-Germans who Hitler was killing get left out and we don't have exact numbers? But check this out. We don't have exact numbers, but hold on, let's go back to this. Precisely how many black Germans died in Nazi concentration camps? We don't know, but estimates put the figure between 25,000 and 50,000. How the hell is it that this never comes up? We're going to deal with all this on the other side of the break. You listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. iRedify is a Black-owned digital platform that showcases Black and Brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read eBooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. The African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. What a way to start out African American History Month. We have an update coming up also on the HBCU bomb threats as well. FBI has identified six juveniles that are persons of interest. We're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. Uh, be sure to register for the online history classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. And this, this helps support the African History Network and helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, pay the bills as well. I have expenses that I, that I incur teaching these classes also because I'm on I'm on two digital platforms that I teach these classes on. I got to pay them each month. But. This helps support us. Um, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. This is class number one. This is a 10-week online class that I teach. And we have some guest speakers in the class. And we have video clips and articles. I have a PowerPoint presentation, over 100 slides. They have book references, everything. This class, class number one, starts up February 5th. 2022, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a 10 week online class. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. We deal with the 800 year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors. We deal with the African presence in the Americas going back tens of thousands of years ago, like the Khoisan, who were here in land we call the United States of America going back at least 51,700 years ago. Um, and we go, we, we go through history chronologically. 
okay? This is a class that I have been teaching on and off since 2017. And if you've taken this class in the past, email me. We're going to give you a 50% discount on it also, okay? And then uh, we have a bundle pack that you can register for both classes for $120. Uh, because the second class I teach is from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. That starts up Sunday, February 6th, class number one, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This second class picks up where the first class leads off. And we go in and each class analyze about a 10 to 15 year period of time to get really deep into this history. All right. So visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We'll post a link here for on the thread of the broadcast for the um for the uh, for the information you could register for this, this and you can use this information with your children as well. I would say the content is PG-13. OK, so let's get back to this. And uh, we're only here for an hour on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. Those watching on Facebook and YouTube, I can tell you right now, we're going past an hour. We may do two hours tonight. OK, because I've been mad all day. So this is all there is to it. Um, we talked about the Nuremberg Laws. I want to get into um, we're going to get to the next. We're going to talk about this uh, piece here from the from the Guardian dot com. Black people were Hitler's victims, too. That must not be forgotten. And then also we're going to look at the uh, we're going to clip uh, two from the Black News Channel here. Shakira, so cue that up. Uh, also, we're going to look at. um the uh u.s holocaust museum the u.s holocaust museum has some good information because i look at numerous sources i look at their sources also the u.s holocaust museum they got they have a page on there afro germans during the holocaust as well they talk about the afro germans there but when we have these conversations in mainstream media somehow people all of a sudden have amnesia i want to go to this clip here from the black news channel they talked about this today on uh the morning show on the black news channel let's go to clip two shakita All right, from the Black News Channel. First place on the view, it was a conversation. Okay, just back up. Started from the beginning, please. So the Started from the beginning. Mouth, whether or not. You know, Whoopi, right? That was on Monday or comments. Um, they have her in hot water this morning. She's now been suspended for two weeks. Whoopi Goldberg facing wide criticism, immediate criticism, too, after saying uh, the Holocaust was not about race and so that's where we'll tee it up joining us now to talk about it here on sharon's table my ladies Brittany cooper misha cross and candace kelly so ladies kim godwin the president uh, of abc news suspended whoopee it happened uh late last night um this despite the apology online she released something whoopee gober did uh that same day monday uh, afternoon or evening i believe on twitter and then she said uh, more on The View yesterday. Um, I want to start with you, Brittany, about the punishment, because what I've read is that this was consulted at the highest level of ABC and the corporation of the high, above Kim Godwin. Is, is this justified, too harsh? Uh, give us the context. Look, I think that what Whoopi needed was a more sophisticated analysis. The Holocaust was absolutely awful. And certainly, given the rise of Nazism and white supremacy in our own context, it really behooves us to talk about race um, in proper ways. Now, I give a bit of side eye because to me, this was a lack of analysis. This wasn't an attempt to uh, reduce the horrors that Jewish people went through. Uh, it wasn't an attempt to misunderstand. Uh, it is ab about the ways that race gets framed in the U.S. context as really being an issue of blackness versus whiteness. And because of many of the people that many of us know are white Jewish people, sometimes I think folks struggle to understand the way in which uh, Jewish identity is racialized in the context of the Holocaust. Um, that's not the same thing as saying what happened to you didn't happen, what happened to you was not egregious, terrible, generation-defining in terms of the levels of trauma. I didn't read Whoopi to be saying that, um, and I do think that folks yeah. always have a problem when uh, Black folks don't get the analysis of race right, and it's so interesting to me when corporations have such clarity about the punishments that Black people need around missteps in these conversations mm. that don't seem to apply across the board. 
So I give the side eye to it, but I also understand that I'm not in this instance part of the aggrieved or offended group. Uh, and so if this suspension mm -hmm. does help Whoopi to get a better analysis, then I'm all for it. Okay, we're out of, you just pause right there. We're out of time here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. Now, Brittany, now, now Brittany Cooper, Professor Brittany Cooper, she was correct up until the point where she said that she's all for uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg being suspended. Whoopi does not need to be suspended, okay? Number one, Americans are very ignorant of history. Americans need a massive history lesson. But Whoopi, one, apologized the next day on The View. Two, she didn't mean anything malice or malicious uh, about it, anything like that, okay? So, yes, they had Jason Greenblatt on from the uh, ADL to talk about some of the history. And America needs a massive history lesson. But they were wrong for uh, suspending. Uh, uh, Kim Godwin was wrong for suspending Whoopi Goldberg. I think she may get some backlash uh, from this. And then also this piece right here from uh where is that uh this piece from shadow and act the view fans call out double standard and whoopi goldberg suspension uh read this here from shadow and Act. we're going to talk about this those watching on facebook and youtube uh keep watching uh visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com register for our online classes right now it's correct wrong behavior is not over till we win we'll kind of forever we'll talk to you tomorrow peace stand by Okay, stand by, everybody. This piece is here from Shadow and Act. We're going to keep going. We're off the air on 9, 10 a.m. Super Team WFDF. We're going to keep going here because I control this. Um, the View fans call out double standard in Whoopi Goldberg's suspension after years of controversial remarks from Meghan McCain, conservative pundits. OK, uh oh, see, see now, see now you just opened up a can of whoop ass. Kim got one because when Meghan McCain was on the view saying stupid sugar, honey, iced tea, making you money. It was all right. But now Whoopi Goldberg made some mistakes. She didn't mean any malice by it. she wasn't trying to harm anybody. She comes back and apologizes. Because Americans are very ignorant of history. In the piece I played from Good Morning America, they talked about a study that shows how there's a declining knowledge in the U.S. of the of the Holocaust, World War II, period. I mean, we dealt with the piece from uh, January 19th, 2021 from uh, CBS This Morning that deals with how uh, this piece here, CBS This Morning, it deals with how uh, many Americans don't know what's in the U.S. Constitution. This piece here from CBS News. You can um, watch this and uh, there's a video uh, clip in here also that you can watch. Listen right here. I hope it pulls up the full story. Okay, hold on. I want to. I want to go to the full article. Uh, most Americans don't know what's in the U.S. Constitution, and then also you had uh, a study from uh, about 2018 where. Two thirds of Americans, uh, two thirds of Americans could not name the three. Uh, two thirds of Americans could not name the three branches of, of the federal government: judicial, legislative, and executive. Okay, this one right here. Let's see. Let's close that out. Close that. Okay, this is the one I want to show you here. Okay, most 
kill me. Most Americans don't know what's in the Constitution, a crisis of civic education. The Constitution was written by white men for white men, largely. January 19th, 2021. We've talked about this here on this show because we deal with real substance on this show. And, and uh, this was the day before Joe Biden and Kamala Harris took the oath of office. It was 13 days after attempted insurrection incited by Benedict Donald, the trade in chief. OK, so they talk about inauguration and they deal with how many Americans don't know what's in the U.S. Constitution, 7,500 word blueprint for America, establishing our national government, basic rights and the process for addressing our problems, at least in theory. The Constitution provides many answers, many uh, questions and answers. It comes out of a historical context. Most people don't understand the history leading up to the Constitution. So read this and watch the video in here. It's very, very informative. OK, so Americans are very ignorant of history. This is not something to treat Whoopi Goldberg like a child uh, for. Because there's a lot of white people that don't understand history and don't understand the Constitution, don't understand World War II, don't understand the Jewish Holocaust, things like this. The View fans call out double standard in Whoopi Goldberg's suspension after years of controversial remarks from Meghan McCain. I don't think Meghan McCain was ever suspended. All that dumbass nonsense she said on The View. This is by Monique Jones. Give it up for Monique for shadowing that. Fans of The View are considering boycotting the series after it was announced that Whoopi Goldberg would be suspended for two weeks after comments she made regarding the Holocaust. Now, I don't watch The View. I see clips here and there. On, I may read an article here and there about it because I monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis. If it's something big, I may see something on MSNBC about the view. I don't watch the view, but I definitely ain't watching it now. On Monday's episode, Goldberg said she felt the Holocaust was not about race while acknowledging that the horrific incident showcased man's inhumanity to man. Her fellow co hosts tried to educate her on. Uh, the scope of the Holocaust effects on racial minorities to no avail. However, late that night, Whoopi, Whoopi, uh, Whoopi Goldberg issued an apology for her words. And then we know the next day on The View on Tuesday, she issued an apology as well. OK. Um, we know Jonathan Greenblatt uh, of the Anti-Defamation League shared the Holocaust was about Nazis systemic annihilation of the Jewish people who they deem to be an inferior race. That's true. The, 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 the Nazis viewed the Aryans as a superior race, pure white people, superior race, and they viewed the Jews as an inferior race. So it was about race, but it's a different racial dynamic than we think of here in the US. And when she was on Stephen Colbert's show, she was talking about understanding race from white people oppressing African-Americans, which is a good place to start, uh, by the way. The quote, the Jewish people around the world have always had my support and, and, and that will never wa waver. I'm sorry for the hurt I caused, Whoopi Goldberg said. OK, you can read the rest of this here. Uh, she doubled down on her comments as a guest on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Once again, saying that Nazis had issues with ethnicity, not race. They, the Nazis. See, race is a. Race is a man-made concept. And the Nazis, uh, and when we go to the uh, um, uh, the Holocaust uh, Memorial, um, the Hol Holocaust Encyclopedia, I have some information on that. She also said, again, the Holocaust was about white on white. Most of the Nazis were white people and most of the people they were attacking were white people, she said, according to uh, showbiz cheat sheet. So to me, I'm thinking, how can you say it's about race if you're fighting each other? This wasn't, I said, th 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 this, uh, this is why she said it wasn't racial. That was, that was about white on white. She said, you can't call this racism. This was evil. This wasn't based on the skin. You couldn't tell who was Jewish. They had to delve deeply to figure it out. No, they created the Nuremberg laws. 
to discriminate discriminate against the Jews and identify against the Jews and measure the width of their nose and different things like this. They created the Nuremberg laws by studying segregation here in the, in the good old U S of a, um, okay. Now let's get past this Tuesday. Goldberg Greenblatt did. Okay. Um, Okay, Jonathan Greenblatt said, deeply appreciate Whoopi Goldberg inviting me onto The View today to have an important discussion on the importance of educating about the Holocaust. Whoopi has been a longtime ally of the Jewish community and, and uh, ADL, and her apology is much welcome. Uh, let's see here. No staff. Okay, they're talking about the suspension. They have the full letter there. Many fans have taken to Twitter to unleash their anger over Whoopi Goldberg's suspension. Lawyer Ernest uh, Owens wrote, Megan McCain got dozens of teachable moments on The View for her racism without penalty. penalty. Megan McCain got dozens of teachable moments on The View for her racism without penalty. Whoopi Goldberg got punished the same day she apologized and educated herself on national TV. Don't tell me anything about affirmative action and reverse racism. This quote, black history, uh, hashtag black history month. This is a hell of a way to start out African-American history month, black history month, bomb threats on HBCUs and Whoopi Goldberg getting suspended from the view. I mean, this, this is a hell of a way to start out uh, African-American History Month. Okay, this is Ernest Owens. I agree with, with Ernest. Uh, Miss Daisy said, uh, I guess she's on Twitter. Um, Whoopi's apology was heartfelt and sincere. Her suspension was ridiculous especially in light of the fact it's Black History Month and considering how much uh, they let Meghan McCain get away with, I'm done with the view and I'm, I, I truly hope Whoopi is too. She should cancel them. Now, Whoopi's worth about $60 million, according to the Oracle I saw today, not counting her money, but she could walk away from the view and she, she could do a Della Reese. Remember Della Reese from Harlem Nights, Kiss My Entire Ass? She could, she could do that. <laughs> She she could tell him you can have a rear view, okay? <laughs> and she could do a Della Reese. Now another uh, person on social media wrote that Whoopi Goldberg should resign from the View because of their belief that ABC has a double standard. Um, <laughs> okay. So read the rest of this here. All right. <laughs> Another another person wrote Whoopi's apology was heartfelt and sincere. Her suspension was ridiculous. Okay, so okay, uh, okay. I think it scrolled back up. Interesting, interestingly enough, Whoopi Goldberg's co-stars also disagree with ABC's decision to suspend her, according to the Daily Beast. That's the article that I just showed you from the Daily Beast. Anna Navarro said to the Daily Beast, I love Whoopi Goldberg. I love The View. This was an incredibly unfortunate incident. Whoopi is a lifelong ally to the Jewish community. She is not an anti-Semite, period. I am sad. I said, how, how, about, if, how about if all y'all just don't show up to work tomorrow? See what happens. See what type of view. See what type of view they have in. Okay. <laughs> they, should just, they should just all call in sick tomorrow. OK, <laughs> and see what type of view you have then. All right. Now. How's everybody doing? OK, follow us on our uh, Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. Also, follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Turn on live notifications there so you know when we go live. You can follow us on Instagram as well at Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. All right, I want to look at this uh, this this next article here. So this is from um, let's look at this one uh, briefly here. This is from theguardian.com. I posted this earlier today, and a lot of people were commenting on it. 
We got hundreds of likes on this one. Black people were Hitler's victims too. That must not be forgotten. The problem is a lot of people don't know it. So you can't forget what you don't know. They just don't know. It doesn't come up. This is why America must have a massive history lesson. And if we're ever going to get reparations, repairing the damage of a legacy of 246 years of different types of slavery and decades of Jim Crow segregation and redlining and, and racism, things like this, America must have a massive history lesson because there was a, there was a study and we talked about it here on this show. There was a study from um, 2018, April 4th, 2018, 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. 40% of white Americans surveyed thought that African Americans could be equally as successful if they just um, if they just tried harder. 40% of Af 40% of white people surveyed uh, 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 newsweek.com has this article. 40% of white people surveyed thought that African Americans could be equally as successful as white people if they just tried harder. Which means they really don't understand the history of racism things like this. And you know what? I'm going to try to pull this up from Instagram. I saw, uh, this is hilarious. Oh, this calls me. I saw, um, what's her name? Jane. Um, what's the, um, did I save that? Oh, I hope, I sure hope I saved it. I meant to save it. Jane Elliott, I think is her name. I'm going to my saved. Uh, I saw something on, um, I saw something on Instagram. It was a clip of Jane Elliott, the anti-racist um, lecturer and scholar, um, white woman. And um, I saw it today. And this sums a whole lot of stuff up. Okay. I'm not that great with Instagram. Let me see. How the hell... Uh, I think I saved it archive. So I got to look and see how the hell I go into the save stuff. I'm more of a Facebook man, man myself saved. Is, um, okay. We didn't save it. Let me see if I can find this right quick. So Jane Elliott was asking the question. She was speaking to a, a group of white people and I think, oh, you know what? I think it was, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Chuck, it was Chuck D's, I think it was Chuck D's um, Instagram page I was on. It was one of, one of these hip hop artists that I follow. Old school hip hop. Ain't no, ain't no Lil Wayne stuff, but <laughs> hold on. Let me see if I can find this. So, she asked them how many of you would oh yeah here it is right here what i'm going to do is i'm going to post this on my instagram page and um i'm going to repost this on my instagram page and show it to you cuz i use repost i i have learned how to use repost in instagram Okay, link detected. All right, now this this clip right here from um, Jane Elliott really sums all this stuff up. So, because you have a lot of white people, they may not know all the history and can't give you all the dates and all that stuff, but they know they wouldn't want to trade places with African Americans. They know that. Okay, it's loading up right now. We'll come to that in just a second. So let's look at this quickly here. And I'm going to show you this clip, okay? If you uh, um you want to you don't want to be standing up watching this clip. Let me just tell you this cuz you're going to fall out laughing. All right. <laughs> it's loading up now. All right. Uh okay, here we go. Let's let's go to this clip here. Let's see. Cuz it just loaded. So you'll be the first to see it on my on my Instagram page. Let's go to this. Let's take the sound off. Be happy to receive the same.
citizens doing this society, please stand. You didn't understand the directions. If you white folks want to be treated the way blacks are in this society, stand. Nobody's standing here. That says very plainly that you know what's happening. You know you don't want it for you. I want to know why you're so willing to accept it or to allow it to happen for others. Mm -hmm. If you, as a white person, would be happy to receive the same treatment that our black citizens do in this society, please stand. You didn't understand the directions. If you, white folks, want to be treated the way blacks are in this society, stand. Nobody's standing here. That says very plainly that you know what's happening. You know you don't want it for you. I want to know why you're so willing to accept it or to allow it to happen for others. If you... Right. <laughs> they should play that on the view tomorrow. <laughs> okay. They they should play that on the view tomorrow. All right. They, they need to play that like... Uh, they should play that on Fox News. This, this that, that, that makes a... a you know... When I do my Black History Month presentation, I'm going to play that at the beginning, the very Black History Month presentation. If I, you know, I spoke to, uh, I spoke, uh, I did a virtual presentation for Davis and Elkins College in West Virginia on Dr. King Day. If I had that clip, if I knew about that clip on, Do on Dr. King, oh, I would have played that because it was a mainly white audience. Oh, I would have played that for them. <laughs> and it was virtual, so they couldn't beat me up or nothing. They wouldn't do that, but it was virtual. So I was here in Detroit. <laughs> oh, I should have played that. The audience, the audience was good. It was receptive. It's a lot of white college students, things like that. It was receptive, but I should have played that right there. All right. Many black, many people, even those with no more than a passing interest in sport in sport have heard of Jesse Owens. Okay. Remember Dorian, Hayward, um, the uh, Jesse Owens movie years ago, I think it was the 80s, something like that, uh, about Jesse Owens, right? 1936 Olympics. The American athlete uh, who ruined Adolf Hitler's moment in the sun. Okay, and here's Jesse Owens here. USA, proud USA, came back to Jim Crow segregation, all this stuff. He could, it was hard for him to find a job, things like this. He went and kicked the world's butt for America. The American athlete who ruined Adolf Hitler's moment in the sun. For there can be no question that Hitler saw the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin as the idea platform from which to amplify Nazi propaganda and demonstrate his white supremacist ideology. But Jesse Owens, the grandchild of a slave, shattered that illusion. Jesse Owens began became the first U.S. track and field athlete to win four gold medals at a single Olympiad. And he came back and it's hard for him to find a job, decent job, all this stuff. I remember one time they had him racing against a horse when he came back to the U.S. For most of the watching world, his dominance in the 100 meter, 200 meter long jump and four by 100 meter relay was a powerful repudiation, a powerful repudiation of Hitler's myth of a superior race of humans, the Aryans. Okay, see, this gets into white racism versus white racism. This gets into white people oppressing other white people, similar to how similar to how the English oppressed the uh, oppressed the Irish, because England colonized Ireland in the, about 12th century AD. So, so stung were the Nazis by Jesse Owens exploits in their own backyard that their propagandist, Joseph Goebbels, would later write in his diary that quote, white humanity should be ashamed of itself. White humanity should be ashamed of itself. 
By this, he meant that it had been a mistake to allow black athletes to compete at the world's grandest sporting event. So, so let me get this straight. You want to you want to beat the world and show dominance. So this see see this is. So you want to show dominance of the Aryan race and show the Aryan race is superior, but you don't want to compete against non white people and you don't want to compete against African Americans. You want to show your superiority, but you don't want to compete really against non white people, but especially compete against African Americans. By this, he meant that it had been a mistake to allow black athletes to compete at the world's grandest sporting event. Why? You, you afraid you're going to lose? So you want to win by asterisk. You want to have an asterisk down there. It's just like um, before African-Americans could uh, play in Major League Baseball, all the other all the other people who were like world champions and all this and, and all the records, all that stuff, you have to have an asterisk. It's like, wait a second, you you segregated segregated African Americans out, and they was they were some of the best uh baseball players, if not the best. The Negro League players were the best baseball players. Some of the best baseball players, if not the best baseball players. So all those records you have before they let Jackie Robinson in the league and others, you gotta have an asterisk there and say, wait a second, they were segregating. This is this is lopsided here. They were segregating against some of the best players, and they knew it. While anti-Semitism was at the core of the Nazis' ideology of hate, black people, Roma, and Sinti people, gay people, physically and mentally disabled people, among other groups, were also under severe persecution. Jesse Owens spectacular achievements did little to change Nazi perceptions of African Americans policies directed against them. Many of whom had come from Germany's colonies in Africa were cruel and humane policies against these Afro Germans or black people in, in, in Germany were cruel and inhumane seen as subhuman Black people were marginalized socially and economically. But even with the shadow of Nazism hanging over them like a dark cloud, many found expression in art and music. All the same, Nazis condemned the influence of Negro culture on German art and music, calling it, quote unquote, degenerated, degenerate and racially alien, degenerate, and racially alien. Although no exact figures exist, it is known that a significant number of black people were detained in concentration camps and forced labor camps during Nazi, during the Nazi reign, and that many were murdered. Well, if it's so known, why the hell aren't they talking about it? How is it that when we have these conversations about the Holocaust, and once again, I have no problem talking about that. People need to understand that history and understand World War II and Nazi Germany and how the, and, and, and Hitler was elected in the office. He came to power in 1933 as German chancellor, and then they rewrote the Constitution of, of, of Germany. I have no problem dealing with that history. But how is it our history gets left out of that history? Nonetheless, there seems to be little interest in Hitler's black victims. Well, you only protect what you respect. See, you only protect what you respect. This is why on yesterday's show, we dealt with how this African-American History Month is harder in schools in certain states where they've been passing these anti-critical race theory laws because now teachers are afraid of, of what to teach in school. And don't want to end up losing their jobs, things like this. We talked about this on yesterday's show. Um, Axios.com had this big story. This was our, our lead story yesterday. This one right here. Go back and watch uh, a Tuesday show, Tuesday, February 1st. First day of African American history. We have hell of a hell of a way to start out. Bomb threats against HBCUs and these, and these ignorant 
anti-critical race theory laws and critical race theory is not even taught in K through 12. New rules are limiting how teachers can teach Black History Month. This is from Axios.com, February 1st, 2022. We went through, went deep into this yesterday. How's everybody doing? If you like if you like this broadcast, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to follow us here. We're here each night. We know we have some new people watching. I was able to send out an email blast because it's so busy right before the uh, um, right before the show. Uh, I need to send out email blasts because I pay constant contact ninety five dollars every month. Um, you can sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kimmit to two two eight two eight. You get the newsletter from us. We let you know about our shows uh lectures i'm doing classes all that text the word kemet k-e-m-e-t to 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter for the african history network or visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com the information is there okay all right text the word kemet to 22828 read this article here from axios.com this was our lead story on yesterday's show now Let's go back to this here. Nonetheless, there seems to be little interest in Hitler's black victims. Their plight is not talked about enough. This is partly because unlike Jews, Roma, Senti, and Roma and Senti, black people were not marked for destruction. Now Hitler was, they were doing experiments on Afro-Germans and they were killing some of them. It was estimates are somewhere between 25 to 50,000 Afro Germans were killed. But they were denied their human rights, these, these black people in Germany. They were denied their human rights, sterilized, persecuted, experimented upon, and murdered in death camps. This racist philosophy underpinned the decision to deny German citizenship to people of African descent, thus complicating their employment prospects and their ability to get by in society. Being born in Germany did not make things the slightest difference. Nazis' fear of racial pollution led to the traumatic breakup of many mixed race families. Nazi fears of racial pollution led to the traumatic breakup of many mixed race families. The derogatory term Rhine, Rhineland bastard was used to describe children from interracial relationships between, um, the, the, between the white Germans and Afro Germans or black people. They were viewed as symbols of racial disgrace and many were forcibly sterilized to prevent, quote unquote, alien blood from being passed on. How the hell is this? How, how is it that this gets left out of the history? See, these are questions that we need to ask. And, and these are things that we really have to talk about during African-American History Month. Now, this this year's annual theme. For. African American History Month, and it's been an annual theme going back to 1928. This year's annual theme deals with black health and wellness in all different aspects of um, black wealth and health, black wealth and uh, black uh, health and wellness. And Asala uh, at asala.org, they have information there dealing with this. So um, Asala is the organization that Dr. Carter G. Woodson co-founded September 9th, 1915. Started out as Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. And uh, is now uh, Association, Association for the Study of African American Life and History. be a solid.org or solid.com one of them all right it's not coming up hold on
all right, it's not common, but but it's it's a solid association for the study of um African American life and history. So this is the governing body of African American History Month. There's been an annual theme going back to 1928. A lot of people don't know this. I do the presentations I do dealing with African American African American History Month are much different than what a lot of people are used to seeing. Black History Monthly. Let me see. Hold on. That's not what I want. Annual themes. Uh, 2020 theme right here. Black health and wellness. 2022 theme. Black health and wellness. That's the official theme for African American History Month this year. All right. Now. Let's go back to this. And I'm going to go back to the clip from um, the Black News Channel because we were running out of time on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF and did not get a chance to uh, finish that clip. Okay, so we'll cue that up. All right, now. They uh, they were viewed as symbols of racial disgrace and many were forcibly sterilized. Um, many were forcibly sterilized to prevent alien blood from being passed on. Nazis were virulent racists in 1935, after the enactment of the notorious Nuremberg racial laws, which designated black people as a minority with alien blood, many left Germany. Now, have you heard this history about Nazi Germany and the, and the persecution of Afro-Germans? Those who remained were isolated and suffered horrendous racial abuse. And while the exclusion of black children from public schools became official policy in 1941, it is a matter of record that they had long suffered racist abuse in their classrooms. In reflecting upon the fate of black people during the Nazi uh, reign of terror, it is clear that any honest dialogue between about racism must include Nazi treatment of black people. It is clear that any honest dialogue about racism must include Nazi treatment about black people. Black people's pain and suffering should not be reduced to a footnote in the history of Nazism. Say that again. See, this is what I'm talking about. Once again, I have no problem with dealing with the, the, pers the Nazi Germany persecution of the Jews, things like that. I have no problem with that. But how is it you leave the history of Afro Germans being persecuted? How is it that that gets left out? That shouldn't be left out of the history. All right, I want to go back to this clip from the Black News Channel. Okay, Black women talk Whoopi Goldberg suspension following Holocaust remarks. But Amisha, is it a double standard? I, I ask. I put it like this because I think we know it's a double standard. But but unpack more for us. No, no, it's definitely a double standard. But by no means do I want to cake for Whoopi right now. Um, what she said was ahistorical. It was hurtful. Um, I would hope that Americans know that Jewish is a both a race and a religion, and that it is not it is not helpful to play fast and loose with comments about the Holocaust, especially less than 24 hours after Holocaust Remembrance Day. So I think that there was a lot going on there that was quite problematic. With that being said, uh, yes, Whoopi is taking a, a hit that white counterparts on conservative networks and on conservative platforms that are spewing literal um, neo-Nazi type information are not receiving that same type of ire. But because she's outside of that space, it, it can be expected that she wouldn't. When we talk about the original big three, ABC, CBS, NBC, when there has been anti anti-Semitic or just information that has been spewed that is hurtful towards the Jewish people, typically more than a suspension happens. She's actually been given a light hand here. In the majority of those cases, individuals are fired. 
So I think that what we ha what we're going to see here is her go back home. She's going to you know learn from this. I, I think that yesterday's episode of The View was amazing in terms of her bringing on the president of the Anti Defamation League, having a real conversation about the deep rooted and problematic, oftentimes uh, misgivings about the Holocaust and about the Jewish people. And quite frankly, I think that from the top down, that probably just was not enough. There were people calling for her firing. There was a, a very large lobby against not only what she said, but also against the network around not being able to corral this sooner. Again, it was this was more than 24 hours later. And, and I think that at the end of the day, yes, there are some egregious behavior here, but also that in comparison to other networks, it's hard to make that because conservatives are able to go fast and loose with a lot of lies. And we've seen it time and time again, yeah, yeah. and their network will yeah. punish them. But I don't think that that should be the bar. The bar is that you're giving clear, accurate information and that you are not being uh, offensive to groups that are that, that are currently being un under attack. We've seen this. We know that the levels of attacks well, against those in the Jewish community and Jewish faith continue to increase. But we also know that, by and large, this was something that was totally avoidable. I watched that episode live. Whoopi mm -hmm. walked herself through this process, and it, I cringed while watching it. Yeah, and she was so emphatic about it. Um, but again, she's apologized. Whoopi Goldberg now suspended. And I should say that the head of the Anti-Defamation League said that the apology is accepted and, and was not necessarily in favor of this suspension, this length of it, but said they'll work together. But together, but All right. So hopefully, hopefully they work together to include the uh, persecution of Afro-Germans at the hands of Hitler and the Nazis also. Once again, no, Whoopi Goldberg should not have been suspended. It's a teachable moment. She apologized. America needs a massive history lesson. Americans are very ignorant of history. Americans are ignorant of the history of slavery as well. No, she should not have been um, suspended. Not at all. And they ain't suspend. Uh, I don't think they ever suspended dumbass Megan McCain. Um, for, for comments she made on The View as well. So black people's pain and suffering should not be reduced to a footnote in the history of racism. Their pain and suffering should not be marginalized because they were not also targeted for annihilation. Understanding the full extent of Nazi and anti-black racism is important for anyone whose ancestors were targeted by the Nazi regime, just as it is for all communities in general and contemporary society. All right. Okay. So read this here. This is from the guardian.com. This came out, uh, January 27th, which was international Holocaust remembrance day. International Holocaust remembrance day. We talked about this here on January 27th. Black people were Hitler's victims too. That must not be forgotten for Rye, Mungazi, and Olivia Marks Wogman for the Grio, for, not the Grio, the Guardian, theguardian.com. Okay. So check that piece out. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Okay. We've got Tyler. Give us a thumbs up if you like this. Give us a heart or whatever it is on the social media platform you're watching on. Follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel. I M H O T E P. I wonder if we, I, I don't know if we're going to talk about this on Roller Martin Unfiltered on Friday. I sure hope we do. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the topics we're going, to, we're going to talk about on Friday, but oh, I would love for this topic to come up. Now, I'm going to go to this here in just a second. Now, this is from the um, International Holocaust Remember, it is, was this Holocaust Encyclopedia, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Okay. We're going to go to this here in just a second uh, because they go. It's a it's a deep. It requires a deeper understanding of history, history in Nazi Germany to understand that um, like white on white racism. OK. And as Whoopi Goldberg said. She's thinking of racism from the context of white people oppressing African-Americans. OK, because she said as a black person here in America, see, that's the context she's coming from. Well, you know, <laughs> maybe if we hadn't been oppressed, maybe she ain't, maybe she didn't have to think that way. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> 
So uh, be sure to register for the, if you like this type of information, you like this type of history we share here on the African History Network and on our fan page and everything. I teach these online classes um, on Saturdays and Sundays. These are online classes, ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Class number one starts up February 5th, 2022. We deal with thousands of years of history and we deal with what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. We deal with the African presence in the Americas going back tens of thousands of years. And one of the references is um, Dr. David M. Hotep's book. The first Americans were Africans documented evidence. And he's a friend of mine also. I've interviewed him a number of times. Um, and we deal with the 800 year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors. So we deal with a ton of history. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, all of that. There's 15 uh, digital lectures that you get from me as a bonus for, for registering for this class. We definitely appreciate all those that support us because this is a lot of work and we don't do this for the money, but it sure as hell takes money to do this. So this helps us keep doing what we do. Um, I'm going to post a link here. You can register. You can watch from around the world. You can use this with your children also. It's not vulgar. I don't do a lot of cursing, things like that. It's not crazy. It's very uh, visual. I have, I have a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips. The class is on sale $80, regularly $130. On sale $80, regularly $130. Then the second class I teach, on, which is on Sundays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., class number one starts up February 6th, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968, okay? We have a special bundle pack. You can register for both classes right now for only $120. There's bonus lectures you get with each class also. And uh, that's a $260 value for only $120. If you've taken... The online, the in either one of these online classes before, email me at ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com and we'll check the records. We'll give you a, a 50% off discount. Okay. If you've taken the classes uh, before from me in the past, email me at ah and I'm going to check the record. I'm going to check the records. Okay. But <laughs> email me, <laughs> email me. Uh, <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe the type of stuff I get. I'm just saying. But anyway. <laughs> Email me and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. Okay. AHN show at African History Network.com. All right. Uh, I want to go to, I want to go to the uh, Holocaust Museum here. And also, African American business owners, post the name of your business here in the thread of the broadcast um, and email us as well. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Okay. Our current promotion buy one month, get uh, two months free. We have that information at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com as well, right here. And all of my DVD lectures, the digital downloads at our website also. We have the um, uh, Black History Month 15 DVD bundle pack that's on sale $100. It's 15 of my lectures. So there's a description there. Um, we click here on order here. There's a description of the lectures. All right. I want to jump into uh, this, this, uh, this next piece here. Because I look at multiple sources. This is from the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. They also have a section on here on Afro-Germans during the Holocaust that we're going to look at next. Um, and uh, I want to look at this piece from thought.com also. Nazi racism and overview. Nazi racism and overview. Fueled racism fueled by Nazi ideology and policies. The Nazis viewed the world as being divided up into competing inferior and superior races. The Nazis viewed the world as being divided up into competing inferior and superior races, each struggling for survival and dominance. They believed that Jews were not a religious denomination, but a dangerous non-European race. They see, so if you don't have this understanding, and a lot of people don't understand this aspect of history, Americans are very ignorant of history for various reasons. 
So if you don't know this, you just think, oh, okay, well, it's just one white group oppressing another white group. No. The Nazis saw Jews as an inferior, a separate inferior race of people. Nazi racism will produce murder of an unprecedented scale. You could compare it to the Holocaust of Africa. Well, it was it was multiple nations um, over the course of. 1441 to um, 18, about 1888 in Brazil, when slavery ends in Brazil, right about that, 1888. And the Portuguese are the first ones to get involved in the transatlantic slave trade in 1441. So you're dealing with a much uh, longer period of history. Um, and one can make the argument that the, um, the weapons of war were much more advanced in World War II than they were during the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. But you can't deny the African Holocaust as well, or the or the Ma'afa. The Ma'afa is a key Swahili term, which means the great disaster, which refers to our Holocaust, the transatlantic slave trade. So when you see that in the, the title of the class that I teach, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa understand the transatlantic slave trade. That's what it's talking about, the Ma'afa. So races believe that innate, innate inherited characteristics biologically determine human behavior. In the early 20th century, such views on race were widely accepted in many parts of the world. In fact, race is not biologically based. It is a cultural classification of groups. So you have people like Dr. Uh, Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, who coins the term Caucasian in 1779. He was about 1779. Um, he was the head of the history department at the University of Göttingen in, in Germany. You have people like Dr. Carl von Linnaeus. Um, and they're going to, uh, these are like some of the architects of the stratification of humanity into races. According to Nazi German, uh, according to Nazi theories of race, Germans and other Europeans have perceived superior physical and mental traits. They considered European, they considered European peoples to be Aryans, Aryans. Now, one of my teachers, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, and if you follow me for a few years, you've seen some of the interviews I've done with him. Professor Kaba, he talks about how um, the Aryans, Hitler got the name, they, they got this, the name Aryans from Arius, who was the Bishop of Hippo, and Arius was of African descent. Arius, Arius is um, a bishop who, um, it does not attend the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. And Arius is disputing the, um, there's a dispute over the nature, nature of um, there's a dispute over using the term Jesus at that time is problematic because the letter J didn't exist until 1630 AD. So when you look at the letter J and if you look at the word Jesus in the dictionary, it takes you back to Yeshua. And also, also um, it's a deep story, but you're dealing with Serapis Christos as well, which is, it's a whole, that's a whole nother presentation. Um, okay. But anyway, Arius is one of the dissenters. And he finds out that he's going to be killed, so he doesn't show up to the Council of Nicaea, all right? The Arians are named after Arius, A-R-I-U-S, Bishop Arius of Hippo. Okay, it's a, that's a whole other conversation. But anyway, okay, so they considered European peoples to be Arians. Descendant, descendant from the ancient Indo-Europeans who settled throughout the European continent as well as Iran and India. 
racial anti-Semitism is the prejudice against or hatred of Jews based on false scientific theories. This aspect of racism was always an integral part of Nazism. So it goes through, there's some good information here. It goes through and talks about all this. Uh, this is the doctrine of racism. Okay. The doctrine of racism asserts that blood determines national ethnic identity. Just keep in mind racism as, as we deal with here on this show, racism is a system of advantage and privilege distributed based upon race, which comes out of the ideology of European white supremacy. Okay. And that's largely understanding racism from the historical context here in the U S it could be different in a different country. It, it, it depends. Within a racist framework, the value of a human being is not determined by his or her individuality, but instead by a membership in a so-called racial collective. All right. Now, um, Not let's scroll down here. I want to go past this racism, queens. Uh, okay, Nazis. I want to go down to page two, past 1931. Not right here. Nazi racists view the mentally and physically ill as blemishes upon the genetic landscape of the so called master race, so called master race. And when they reproduce, as a biological danger, uh, 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 to, they uh, sorry, but, but Nazi races viewed the mentally and physically ill as blemishes upon the genetic landscape of the so-called master race, and when they reproduced as a biological danger to the purity of the Aryan race. After careful planning and data collection during the last six months of 1939. German physicians began to murder disabled residents of institutions throughout Germany in an operation that they euphemistically call euthanasia, euthanasia. According to Nazi theories of race, Germans and other Northern Europeans were Aryans, a superior race. During World War II, Nazi physicians conducted bogus medical experiments seeking to identify physical evidence of Aryan superiority and non-Aryan inferiority. Despite killing countless non-Aryan prisoners in the course of these experiments, the Nazis could not find any evidence. The Nazis could not find any evidence for their theories of, bio, of biological uh, racial racial differences among human beings. Once in power, the Nazis implemented racial laws and policies that deprived Jews, black people, people of African descent, Afro-Germans, and Roma, who were the gypsies, of their rights. Now, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene talks about if he, in one of his old lectures and he's talked about it on one of my shows before he said if you want to know who the gypsies are put an e in front of the word gypsy and what do you get you get egypt if you want to know who the gypsies are because the gypsies were always depicted as a darker skin people and they uh told fortunes and read palms and did different things like this. During World War II, the Nazi leadership set about what they referenced to as ethnic house cleansing in the occupied Eastern territories of Poland and the Soviet Union. This policy included the murder and annihilation of so-called enemy races, including the genocide of European Jews and the destruction of the leadership of the Slavic peoples. Nazi racism produced murder on an unprecedented scale. Okay, now let's, let's flip over and look at what they say 
because they have uh, they have a section on here dealing with Afro Germans too. And I just find it interesting that that gets left out of the conversation. Let me pull this up here. Let's go to. Okay, let's go to this one next. Dealing with the Afro Germans. All right. Now, this is at the same place. United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Encyclopedia.ushmm.org. Afro-Germans during the Holocaust. So you admit that there was some there. Because I can't tell by a lot of these conversations. The Nazi German regime did not have an organized program to eliminate African Germans. However, the regime discriminated against and persecuted them. Some black people in Germany and German occupied territories were isolated an unknown number were sterilized, incarcerated or murdered. So you admit it. Because once again, International Remembrance Day of the Holocaust, January 27th in January. And the reason why it's on um, January 27th is because that's when uh, Auschwitz, the uh, death camp, uh, the labor camp Auschwitz, that's when the Soviets uh, liberated um, the prisoners of Auschwitz, uh, January 27, 1945. That's why it's on um, the International uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Day is on January 27th, okay? Um, if you look at this uh, piece here from history.com, uh, Auschwitz is liberated. Talked about this um, and we're 27th. Uh, can we get that piece up? Okay. Well, hold on. Where is that? Forty-five. Okay, history.com. All right, I'll pull that up in just a second here. Um, and that's part of this day in history. Okay, right here. Okay, January 27th, 1945. This day in history, history.com. Because when it, I get um, emails from different news sources all day long. So I, the this day in history comes in from the history, from the history channel around 6 a.m. I get the um, email from them each morning dealing with this date in history. On January 27, 1945, Soviet troops enter Auschwitz, Poland, freeing the survivors of the network of concentration camps and finally revealing to the world the depth of the horrors per perpetuated there, perpetrated, I'm sorry, per perpetrated there. Auschwitz was really a group of, of camps designated one, two, and three Roman numerals. They were also 40 smaller satellite camps. Okay, so read the rest of this here. January 27, 1945, Auschwitz is liberated. So that's why the International uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day is on January 27th. All right, now let's go back to this right here. Afro-Germans. 
somehow this gets I, I, i'm just amazed how this just gets left out of the conversation and it's right here at the holocaust museum's website so it's like uh okay so you know about this All right, the Nazi German regime did not have an organized program to eliminate uh, African Germans. However, the regime discriminated against and persecuted them. Some people, some black people in Germany and German occupied territories were isolated and unknown numbers sterilized, incarcerated or murdered. So they did they break down key facts, which are helpful. Nazi persecution of Afro-Germans occurred despite their relative small presence in Germany. The Nazis forcibly sterilized a group of Afro-German children, a group of Afro-German children whom they derog derogatorily called Rhineland bastards, as we uh, said in, in one of the previous uh, articles. Uh, I think it was the one from The Guardian. Most of these children were the progeny of French colonial troops from Africa that were stationed in the Rhineland region after World War I. Now, black people fought against Nazi Germany in World War II as members of the Allied militaries. Uh, some of them were held as prisoners of war. A lot of them were mistreated also as prisoners of war. So then it goes through and breaks. It talks about Afro-German children in the Rhineland. It talks about Nazi persecution of Afro-Germans. It talks about African-Americans under the Nazis. It, it Then it has a section, African-Americans interned as American citizens. All this is here. So how is it? This, this doesn't get come up in. This doesn't come up in these conversations. All this is here. Valeda Snow, jazz musician Valeda Snow in the 1930s, famous Tennessee jazz musician Valeda Snow was known as Little Louie. OK, named after Louis Armstrong because her talent with the trumpet rivaled the legendary Louis Armstrong. She performed around the world, but it was a tour of Europe that would haunt her for the rest of her life. While in German occupied Denmark, Valeda Snow is said to have been arrested and imprisoned in Copenhagen. It is still unclear why she was arrested or what was done to her while she was held. But her release in May of 1942. Uh, but after her release in May of 1942, uh, in a May 1942 prisoner exchange, Valeda Snow never recovered emotionally. She continued to perform in the United States, but never regained her former success. She died in 1956 at the age of 51. So let's just look at this briefly here. So Afro-German children in the Rhineland following World War I, the victorious allies occupied Rhineland, the Rhineland in West Germany. The use of French colonial troops, some of whom were black, in these occupation forces heightened anti-black racism in Germany. Racist propaganda against black soldiers falsely depicted them as rapists of German women and carriers of venereal disease, of venereal and other diseases. Racist propaganda against black soldiers falsely depicted them as rapists of German women and carriers of venereal and other diseases. The the German press derogatorily referred to the children of black soldiers and German women as the Rhineland bastards. The Nazis viewed Afro-Germans, children with one African parent and one German parent, Afro-Germans, the Nazis viewed Afro-Germans as a threat to the purity of the German race. In his 1925 autobiography,